Hi everyone and welcome to the Nunez Nunchi Deep Dive, being introspective with K-dramas from a mental health perspective. Singles Inferno was all the rage. I just started it because mm -hmm, I needed a breather from the red sleeve. But interestingly enough, the first episode got me irritated. But anyway, that's what I'll talk about because I also saw an article from the Korea Junong Daily by my friend Haley Young who wrote about colorism. Now in Singles Inferno, you hear some of the guys talking about the women going, oh yeah, I really like the way she looked. Oh, she was really cute, innocent, pure, light skin. I like women with light skin. That triggers some people to go on social media and talk about colorism in Korea. And Haley Young wrote this article for Korea Junong Daily about whether is it colorism, which is discrimination against your skin color, is it being racist, or is it something else? I do believe it's something else. Now let's go to the something else and talk about beauty standards in Korea. Okay. Now growing up, I will say the th the biggest criticism I heard most about, aside from grades, was the way I looked. The way you look is a big deal. It's Korean beauty, that's, there's such thing as K-beauty now, right? The standards are high. We see the K-dramas, what do we see? Fair skin, very fair, very white, light skin, glassy, dewy, that's the look for both men and women, okay? And so think of the culture there, and then understand that term when the guy was like, oh, she looks so pure and innocent. I really like light skinned and even light. I mean, to that point, I think everybody's so light skinned, but I guess she had a lighter skin tone. Obviously she was wearing white. So she had this very beautiful ethereal look, I thought, you know, it was surreal. So that said, that triggered some people to be like, oh my gosh, being discriminated against skin color, blah, 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 blah. Historically speaking in Korea, the lighter your skin color or just being very fair skinned signified social class, higher social class and that you were uh, wealthy because you could be indoors and didn't have to work outdoors like manual labor. So those who had some color who were tanned, sun-kissed glow, which the Western philosophy or Western beauty standards appreciates, including myself because that's how I grew up, is very different in Korea or in Asia where it's all about covering yourself up, having fair skin, no freckles, getting them zapped and removed, which Korea is really good at. And I'm not saying anything bad about this. This is just what the culture is, but it can be triggering when you're struggling with your own self image or body image, which is a big deal, especially to women. Body dysmorphia, I'm seeing it more and more. K-dramas sometimes do not help that. Now, as much as I love K-dramas and the, and the golden nuggets of mental health wisdom that it provides, it can be triggering and jarring when we're looking at body image issues and things that you may struggle with about the way you look because look at the stars in the gay dramas and they're like, I mean, even I'm looking at them going, oh my gosh, look at their skin, what, right? Not even a wrinkle or a line. Obviously it's also makeup covering it, but they take very good care of their skin. It's a very important deal in Korean culture. And again, the whiteness, the paleness, not so much about being more white, right? Or Western white, it's just having that fair skin uh, tells you something about what they believe to be true about this person, uh, what kind of social class they have, or just the fact they even look very innocent and pure. That's what it's referring to in Singles Inferno. There's a lot of things in that. I was like, oh my gosh, the first, oh my gosh, that first hour. I was like, really, really? But I'll get through it because like I do. I always criticize something and end up really liking it, like True Beauty. True Beauty also talked about beauty, you know, her having uh, blemishes on her skin, right? Which actually is very common in high school, puberty. Um, and then covering it up and discovering her own passion and talent for cosmetology. So that's what I looked at. So that's what I try to get you to look at. Why? For the sake of your mental health. When you're constantly nitpicking at the way you look, which is human nature, you look in a mirror and you're like, ooh, yeah, I have this one thing. You ignore everything nice about your face and then you see this one thing which I did the other day. I was like, oh my gosh, what's this thing? What is it? It's a blackhead, you squeeze it out, but that's what you notice. And that's normal. So I'm not saying that's not normal, but how can you make yourself feel better? It's also very common in Asian households, because I grew up like this, because my elders saying this to me and my parents, oh, you look too fat. Oh, you look too skinny. You look like a refugee. I actually got that a couple times, um, especially when I was like training for a half marathon. Oh, you need to eat more. You need to eat less. What's, what's okay, what's up with your hair? You walk right in, the first thing they notice is, oh, yeah, that doesn't look good on you. Right, you're like, hello, hello. It's hurtful, it's insulting, it can be triggering. 
and that is the culture, right? That's the imperfections of the culture that I say to endure. You can't necessarily change that. You can't say to your parents decades of cultural traditions of saying all that or having that standard of beauty to just completely do away with that. It may help you feel better to confront the person and be like, I don't appreciate that. That is insulting. Please don't say that or I'm not going to come visit you. You can say all that. That's helpful. Yes. But it may not change the behavior because it's embedded in there. But what you can change is how you approach it, how you feel about yourself, what you can do to build this resilience or tolerance to that so that you don't get triggered. We can do all that. And that's what I'm talking about today. So Singles Inferno kind of triggered me when I was like, yeah, oh my gosh, totally talking about the way they look. Yeah, it makes sense because that's all they could judge on, right? Judging a book by its covers, what they were doing. And then when Haley Young wrote this article, which I thought that was so timely, um, I read it right when I saw the first episode. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's not colorism. It's the fact that, yeah, that pale beauty, beauty, white skin was is so appreciated, admired, and really associated to beauty because I grew up being too tan because I would be outside. Growing up in America, you want to be sun-kissed glow. You want to have this tan, especially when you're growing up. You're like, I want to have this healthy glow even in the winter. That's just Western beauty, right? And I still relate to that because I want some healthy glow. And I don't think I'd ever be that pale. Because when you're in Korea, I mean, they cover themselves up. I'm talking these sun hats, which I do have one of those, and sunglasses, and then a mask, right? Because of dust, or also maybe you got a procedure, and then they put sunblock on. They're very diligent about it. That's the beauty standard. So again, not insulting that, understanding that's part of the culture, but how can you navigate that when you're not feeling good about yourself? Or even if you are feeling good about yourself and all of a sudden feeling insulted. Number one thing is to ask yourself, what makes me feel good about myself? What do I like about myself? Do you ever ask yourself that? Well, I think it's important that you ask yourself that. Mm -hmm. Because what we tend to base it on is what other people say to us. That's not gonna work in the end. You need to go, you know what I like? Um, I do like my smile. I got braces. I have good teeth. I really like that about myself. You know, I really like, someone actually said this, that they really like their eyebrows and eyelashes, that they didn't have to use special products because they had a lot of hair there. I, I really admire that too. So they were saying, I really like that. I'm like, okay, then accentuate it. Appreciate what you do like about yourself. Here's, let's go to the five senses. Touch. What you wear matters. So if your favorite color, mine tends to be, if you can tell, pink, teal, purple, reds. I like the bold colors. Wear them. And you'll notice that I do tend to wear bolder colors because I feel good in those colors. And that's important for my own self-confidence. Even if someone, someone actually said to me, that's too bright red. And I'm like, oh, but I really like the shirt. You know what? But I like the shirt and I like the color. And so be it. You'll see me in a lot of red. That's what you can do, folks. Also, listening. You know, that's another uh, five senses. Hearing. You can hear the insults and have it go through your ear and out the other ear. It can be hurtful, and as it's going through, it's like, oh, God, oh, that hurts. Oh, my God, but i got to pull that out. And I need you to pull that out the best you can, and then listen for those compliments or even the people that do encourage you or your own voice going, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, there, there she goes, or there he goes, insulting my hair. I'm too dark-skinned. Yeah, I, I got some tan the other day. Um, I didn't mean to, but I put some block on, but I still got color, and that they're insulting that. Or, wow, they're saying that I look too fat. I look too skinny. I'm not eating enough. I'm eating too much. Whatever that is. How do you make yourself feel good? Where you go, you talk to yourself. It's positive self-talk. There's such thing as going, but you know what? Okay, I'm ready for this. Go in armored up. Not with a sword and all this stuff, but like with a shield and your own weapon to go, but I feel good about myself, but I like the sweater I'm wearing. I purposely chose red. I do like my smile. Hey, guess what? I got a little too much color because I was in the sun yesterday because I was playing tennis or swimming, having fun. Remember why you were having fun if you got color or tanned, right? And I got that a lot growing up. Hmm, no more tassel. Ooh, no more tassel. Too dark. And I'd be like, okay, you can't help it if you're a child playing outside or you're going to day camp and you're out in the sun. And yes, there are there's ways to protect yourself, but sometimes I don't try too hard because I don't mind. By the way, there's vitamin D in the sunlight, so you kind of got to have that. And I do know Asians lack vitamin D. That is a fact. And uh, I've heard that from numerous practitioners, doctors that I work with. I also was low on vitamin D you know, just prone to just Asian DNA. And I was like, what? I go out in the sun, they go, it's not about that. You also have to take vitamin D, like vitamins. And I do. Plus, 
enjoy walks, right? But you can also put sunblock on. So I have my sunblock on, yes I do. But again, you'll still get some color unless you're literally gonna avoid the sun, which I don't believe in. So that said, that's my, right? And so looking at the K-dramas too, from a point of view of not pointing out, I don't feel good about myself, so this is triggering me. I need you to go, how can I make myself feel good about myself so this doesn't trigger me? That's the question you ask. True beauty, a lot of folks liked it, but some folks were like, how could you like that? It's all about beauty, bullying, her face and blemishes. No, look at the fact what, what she discovered about herself, her own confidence, the guy that loved her for her skin, you already knew what she looked like, and then discovering her passion for cosmetology. That's what I looked at. And then the family dynamics and all that. That's all, look at the whole package, right? Oh my Venus, there was, a, there was definite fat shaming, but look at the journey of uh, Shinmina's character and how she discovered herself and chose for her own good to get back in shape. That was for herself. Those comments bothered her, but she was like, I don't, I don't feel good about myself, that's why they're bothering me, so what can I do? I would say much of the time when you get triggered, triggered by a comment, it's because it hits close to home. Let's be real. Maybe you're not feeling good about something they said because you're feeling the same way about yourself, but it's easy to blame someone else. So this is where I say be introspective, right? Looking at Singles Inferno, what you did not like, but what you like about yourself. That's just the first episode. And then other dramas, K-dramas, what do you like about what you're seeing? What do you like and reflect it back to you? Not the fact of, oh my gosh, they're so perfect, I'll never be that way. Sure, those are the black and white thinking of too much of the extremes, but I need you to ask daily, this is a meditative practice, mindfulness-based skill of, how can I boost myself up? So on Asian to ask that, but so important to do. That is for your mental health. No one else can control your mental health, even though we like to blame others around us, but you are the most in control of your well being. And if you don't feel good about your body image, you ask yourself, what can I do to feel good about my body image? Not be like, this person makes me feel bad, this person makes me feel bad. That may be true. You can't control anyone else. You cannot change someone else, let alone family. So the best thing to do is to do what's best for you. And that's what you're gonna do. So from this moment on, even listening, listening to the music that makes you feel good, gets you up to bed. You know what I like Jessie? She has lots of curves and she embraces those curves. So embrace the curves you have. Embrace the things you like about yourself. I used to dislike my short height, but now I'm like, you know what, no. People have said that I'm petite, but feisty, so I'm gonna use that feisty strength and play it out, and I do. So what compliments you've gotten or things that you feel good about yourself, bring them out more, 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 more. And then find those K-dramas and bring them out too, going, that's what I like about her. She reminds me of me. She definitely doesn't look like me, maybe, but I really like the fact that she struggled with this. So do I. That's also the relatability factor. So I hope that helps, folks. That's going back to Singles Inferno, talking about colorism in this article that Haley Young wrote and kind of made me think about how can we address the beauty standards. You should have your own beauty standards. Hold yourself accountable to your own beauty standards. Look within. So turn the lens on you. That's being introspective. That's why I say that. It's so easy to look outward. No, look inward and ask that key question. What's my nunchi telling me about myself? Why am I being triggered? Oh, I don't feel good about myself. How can I feel good about myself? And then doing those things that help you. Thanks for watching Nunez Nunchi Deep Dive. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button for new videos to come.